Questions for reflection. In our first reading, we hear portions of chapter 9 of the book of the prophet Ezekiel and portions of chapter 10. Ezekiel is given a deeply disturbing vision. Because Israel has committed abominations, the judgment of the Lord has come upon her. The scene is horrific. Make no mistake, sin invokes the just punishment of a just God. But note that there are some who are mourning and groaning, grieving and lamenting over the abominations committed by Israel. They are marked with a tau, the letter T. This translation says a cross. The early fathers of the church, in reading this passage allegorically, saw a foreshadowing of the Lord sending His Son, and the cross as the sign which would be marked on the foreheads of all the baptized, which holds back the judgment of God. Also notice in the second part of the reading, we hear verses from chapter 10. Even after the horrific judgment, the divine glory was still resting on the cherubim. These are the angels who attend to the Lord and bear His throne. Even in executing His just punishments, the judgment which their abominations deserved, God does not withdraw His presence entirely. Our actions against the Lord, our sins, bring judgment upon us. But God's mercy is never far away. He calls us, the ones marked with the cross, to repent. He sent His own Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, the one without sin, to pay the penalty for us. And as the Apostle Paul wrote to the Romans, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, Romans 6, 23. In our responsorial psalm, excerpts from Psalm 113, we hear very familiar words. They're used regularly in the Catholic Liturgy of the Hours and at Holy Mass. The entire Psalm 113 is David's prayer of praise to the Lord, the helper of the needy. Of course, the needy are the poor in all their manifestations. But we are also the needy. And the more we realize that, the deeper our faith becomes. We realize the extraordinary love of a God who reaches out to puny, mere mortals like us and gives us the fullness of His love. David knew this well. That's why he was constantly praising the Lord. Realizing our utter dependency on God, our great need for His love and mercy, opens the door to an ever-deepening relationship with Him. He created us for Himself and calls us into a relationship with Him, and praise is the only real fitting response to such love. The Gospel for today's Holy Mass is taken from chapter 18 of St. Matthew. Remember, just recently we heard the first part of that chapter when Jesus calls a child to Himself to answer the disciples' question as to who is the greatest in the kingdom. In this passage, Jesus calls us to ever-deepening holiness of life because we are His disciples, and that holiness calls us to live differently with one another. He's calling us to be reconcilers, eager to resolve our disputes with integrity. In fact, this passage and others like it form the foundation for what became the canon law of the church. This translation says, report it to the community. A more accurate translation is, tell it to the church. The early Christians did not bring one another to civil courts. They lived a new way wherein they would seek to resolve disputes with one another within the church. Do we live that way?